Coming up, employees of an Indonesian company donate their failed coin banks to Ziji and blood to Red Cross. Architects and city volunteers from the Philippines are in Nepal to go over post-earthquake rebuilding plans. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Dennis Wu. Thank you for joining us. Kicking off today's program in Southeast Asia, Ziji volunteers in Jakarta, Indonesia, have been promoting daily acts of charity through saving money and donating to coin banks to help the needy, among the employees of PTA Plus Pacific. The volunteers have also held charity events for the employees to bring back their failed banks. Though most workers here do not earn a lot, they still gladly embrace this practice. On the latest coin bank homecoming, even the Red Cross came to hold a blood drive, which was joined by both the staff and volunteers. <laughs> Over 300 employees of this company are pouring the money they have saved in the coin banks into large urns. This is the third time that Ziji volunteers have come here to collect their donations. We do this because we want to help needy people. This is what motivates us to keep saving money in the coin banks. The Red Cross also attends the event for the first time to ask people to donate blood. Over 100 employees, along with some Ziji volunteers, roll up their sleeves to donate blood. This is the right thing to do, so just do it. Although these workers do not earn much money, they still want to do good, and the company's management is more than happy to create opportunities for them to do so. We've held many charity events, either with Ziji or the Red Cross, so our employees can do good together. We encourage them to do so. Doing good together also creates an atmosphere of love in the company. Stay in Indonesia to help pass on Ziji's humanistic values to its employees and inspire compassion in their hearts. Best Western Harrison, also in Jakarta, handed out Ziji coin bags to its employees so they have a chance to practice daily acts of kindness. On this day, each of the 120 employees of Best Western Hotel in Indonesia receives one Ziji coin bag. I want our staff to learn about saving money, not for themselves, but to help other people. It will train their patience and sincerity to help. In addition to seeking profits, this hotel also supports Ziji's idea of helping people. So it wants to add Ziji culture to its business environment. I've come to Ziji Da'ai TV to talk about a cooperation deal. Then I read a Ziji monthly there. I thought the magazine would be suitable in our hotel. So I've placed this magazine in our lobby, restaurants, bars, offices, and rooms. Currently, over 4,000 Ziji coin banks are being used in Indonesia. It means the idea of saving coins every day in the coin bank has become widespread that even the hotel wants to join in. Moving on to the Philippines, after Typhoon Melo struck the country last December, Ziji volunteers arrived in the disaster area to offer aid distributions. In Mindoro Provinces, Bayanan Barangay, Ziji volunteers discovered that conditions were particularly dire. Volunteers quickly sprang into action and offered emergency relief goods and money to help. Some residents remarked that despite the harsh conditions, they were deeply moved seeing the commitment and care of Ziji volunteers, who came all the way from Manila to help. Many residents also expressed a desire to pay back the kindness in the future. This truck's delivery can't be delayed because it's loaded with urgent relief goods for a typhoon-stricken community. The truck is headed to Bayanan Barangay, where some residents will ride scooters and others will walk to what will be a meaningful gathering for the community. As the captain of Bayanam Barangay, I speak for everyone when I express our sincerest thanks to the Ziji Foundation. Thank you to Master Zheng Yan and the global Ziji family. Let's all say thank you for the relief goods they have offered. The residents in their dire conditions are curious about the blankets and eager to take them home. After understanding that the relief goods of money, rice, blankets, and daily items were provided thanks to Ziji donations, 
donating members worldwide, residents were moved to tears. They expressed gratitude for their own blessings and a desire to help others in the future. <laughs> Right now, we're living in a small tent in the mountains. We are so thankful that Siji has come to help us. You've given us food, clothes, and blankets. I am also thankful to God. He's shown us his love for sending Siji here to help. As these residents cross the riverbed to return to their homes, they must pass by their old flooded neighborhood. However, with the relief goods on their backs, they also carry a little inspiration and positivity to face the days ahead. Next to East Malaysia, on February 19th, heavy rains led to dangerous flooding in Kuching of Sarawak province, resulting in the evacuation of nearly 8,000 people. 20 schools were also forced to suspend classes. Flooding in some areas was extreme, with water levels reaching chest height and roadways completely submerged. While some local city volunteers went to survey flood damage by boat, others went to visit the local shelters to deliver some food and blankets. In eastern Malaysia's Sarawak province, days of continuous rain have resulted in flooding. In the most serious areas, single-story buildings are half-submerged. When Suji heard the news, some volunteers headed into the flooded areas, where they discovered some residents were still out in the flood. The local government has already evacuated 8,000 people who are now staying at temporary relief shelters. The floods have also forced the closure of 20 schools. In the Kuching area alone, there are now 24 relief shelters. What we need most is food. That's what we're lacking. With everyone living here, sometimes if a family gets some food and has a little extra, they will share it with everyone. Suji volunteers visit the shelters one by one to get an idea of what people need. Then they get to work quickly, preparing food so that they can deliver a hot meal to the residents. Nature can be menacing at times, but Suji is there for these residents to offer a hot meal, some blankets, and most of all, some love and compassion to warm the hearts of these residents. According to the meteorological reports, a low-pressure air front in Sarawak means that heavy rain is expected to continue. A serious flood warning remains in effect for the region. In April of 2015, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake devastated Nepal and damaged about 8,000 schools across the country. The locals had to build temporary classrooms with bamboo so that the students could continue studying. City volunteers had surveyed some of those damaged schools several times in the past in order to help with their reconstruction. Recently, city volunteers from the Philippines visited once more with architects to present their construction plan of a local school to the government of Nepal. The locals built temporary classrooms with bamboos so their children could continue their education. In April 2015, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake damaged about 8,000 schools across Nepal, and Siji decided to come to the locals' aid. Siji volunteers from the Philippines have come to Nepal several times to survey some of those damaged schools. This time, Henry Nunez, deputy CEO of Siji Philippines, came to Nepal with architects of Palafox Associates. After they arrived, they first presented the rebuilding plans of one of the schools to local volunteers. After that, the volunteers and the architects visited officials of the Department of Education and explained their rebuilding plan and how they intend to provide a learning environment that is both safe and full of Tsuji's humane spirit to the officials. During this six-day survey, Tsuji volunteers visited three schools and one hospital. Besides expressing their gratitude to Tsuji, the government of Nepal also promised that they'll do their best to provide any assistance that Tsuji may need.
having introduced the history of Cixi's Bomoro Registry and the people behind it over the past few days. Today, we bring you stories of the donors and their respective recipients. With chances of finding a match at 1 in 10,000 to 100,000, these strangers have been brought together by love and faith. Before he received my bone marrow, he really didn't look like me. But afterwards, he slowly began to look like me. Suji volunteer Lin Shu Jun first donated her bone marrow in 2006. Nine years later, she finally had the chance to meet the one who received her donation. Today, I came bearing the love of two people. Why? Because when I was about to have my marrow harvested, my husband was in critical condition. He would later die the next day. Before he passed on, he kept on reminding me to keep my spirits up and maintain my stamina so that I may complete the donation. To be able to see him today really makes me very happy. <laughs> The joy of furthering someone else's life has been extended from the meeting to another bone marrow drive. Wang Honjun, who has fully recovered after his transplant, is here with his wife, who just gave birth to register. I had wished for a child, and I vowed that if I ever did get pregnant, I'll register to become a bone marrow and organ donor after giving birth. Now that my wish has come true, I'm just here to fulfill my end of the bargain. Now he has a family and also has a child. Isn't this the continuation of life and the new hope of a family? Saving a life just feels wonderful. Thanks to advancements in medical technology, more lives can be saved. However, the key in completing a bone marrow transplant lies in finding a donor with a matching human leukocyte antigen and the person's selfless love. Donating stem cells poses no threat to the donors at all. In fact, this helps speed up the metabolism rate of their stem cells. Though the extraction process is a bit more difficult than just donating blood, to be able to save a life makes it all worthwhile. like his second mother, his Taiwan mother. Now the blood of a Taiwanese flows in his veins, so he wishes he has a chance to honor his Taiwan mother today. As I am an indigenous inhabitant, I want to call out to my fellow indigenous people to register with the Cixi Bone Marrow Registry, so more indigenous people will have a chance to find a match. After making a donation, I didn't know his condition. I have been looking forward to seeing him healthy again. It makes me even happier to know that he is a great athlete. The chance of finding a matching HLA between two complete strangers is one out of 10,000 to one out of 100,000. And it is because of this rare chance that two people are brought together. <laughs> After completing the donation, I have been looking forward to the meeting. I prayed almost daily for her to recover completely. As I am a single mother, I hoped my perseverance can be passed on to her through my DNA. When I found out that I donated twice to the same person, I really hope that he will make a full recovery. 
I also hope to meet him, praise him for the courageous efforts that he made, and wish him good fortune. Thank you for saving my life twice, so I may see my children grow up. Thank you. Thank you. Stay in Taiwan, Northern Tima members regularly hold free clinics on behalf of foreign caregivers and laborers at the new Taipei City Hall. At the most recent event, Tima worked together with local health professionals and the new Taipei City Pharmacists Association to promote safe medication practices. In addition, Vietnamese dancers were performed to help these foreign friends feel more at home. The beautiful dance performance here reflects Vietnamese culture and life. Many Vietnamese caregivers and laborers have gathered at the square in front of the new Taipei City Hall, enjoying some of their homeland's traditions. Most of them have come to Taiwan to do labor work, so many have health concerns. We do our best to provide them medical services, just like anyone else in Taiwan. With empathy for these foreign friends, Tima has organized this free clinic on behalf of Vietnamese workers, which includes safe medication consultation. In addition to psychiatric consultation, at the free clinic, some Vietnamese volunteers also provide personal interpreting services. I work at a printing company. I am here to see a Chinese medicine doctor for my sore throat. I feel better after they performed acupuncture on me. Thank you. Some of them do not speak Mandarin very well because they've just arrived, so the doctor cannot understand them. I am very blessed to be able to spare my time to help them. As these foreign workers face cross-cultural barriers, the free clinic not only provides them with physical care, it also makes them feel welcome in this foreign land. As we mentioned yesterday, eight-year-old Lin Suqin, who was rescued from the collapsed Weiguan apartment complex in Tainan some 60 hours after the February 6th earthquake, has returned to school. We now check on her and also get an update on how other survivors of the building are doing. After adequate rest, earthquake survivor Lin Suqing is returning to school. She has returned to school. Her mother said that she is recovering well, maybe because children recover faster. Her dad said that she looks fine, as long as no one reminds her of the disaster. Lin, who was rescued from the rubble of the collapsed Weiguan apartment complex, has returned to her normal life with the care of medical professionals and her family. However, other residents of the building are still worried about how to rebuild their lives. I don't. I don't. Mm. Among them is 61-year-old Mr. Yao, who suffers head injury from the earthquake. In addition, his younger brother also broke his right leg. I hope my injury heals soon, or else how can I work? Yao has found temporary residents with the help of charity organizations and sought support from city volunteers. To help more quick survivors like Mr. Yao, the volunteers are stationed at a community activity center near Weiguan apartment complex, ready to lend further assistance. Continuing our report on the Samoan way, for the Samoans who have settled in the United States, God and their religious belief is very much an important part of their lives. It's the foundation of their community. Therefore, when city volunteers invited some Samoans to join them in volunteering, there were no doubt some mental obstacles to overcome. Here's more. Jesus, we want nothing but you this morning, Lord. In my family and in my Samoan community, our foundation is set on God. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence into this place. And so, as a family, we do go to church. One thing I notice about any Samoan community, God comes first. In our culture, it, it goes God first, family. We were raised God first and then family. First God and God, of course. God always comes first. 
uh, that's just like the foundation that we were built on. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, we come before your throne. Thank you, Lord. If we don't have that, we would not have stability. And so when Roxanne and I met, she knew that I was a Christian, and I knew that she was Buddhism. And so my husband, he was saying, are they trying to get us to change our religion to Buddhism? Suchi Foundation alone, I never heard of it. So when I learned they were Buddhists, it kind of troubled my heart a little bit. But Roxanne, she did clearly say to me that there is Christians in the Suchi Foundation. She did clearly say to me that she's not all about taking that away. But my husband was still skeptical. And the Suchi Foundation, I didn't know what they were all about. So I got to be cautious about his decisions that I make and make sure that it helped family. Eventually, instead of me explaining to them, I wanted them to see what Suchi is all about. I wanted to show them. And, and so uh, we have um, a dinner in the community center. Um, this organization that's here is called Suchi. It's T-S-U, right? C-H-I. C-H-I. And I wanted us to come together and, and work together as a collaborative family to provide uh, resources to help Everyone out. I was so glad that they came out, and at the same time, I saw my. I look over and I see my husband sitting there, just like really observing. And then so I started to uh, to talk about Suji, how Suji help out with Samoan people in, back in the island, and then you know talk about Suji's philosophy, talk about a uh, great love actually, you know, the in travel beyond ethnic group and religion. I'd like to get you guys all helping our community through Tsuchi as a vehicle for everybody. In the beginning, it was a little shaky, but Tsuchi Foundation made them realize they were just trying to get us to be volunteers and to help do the work that they do. You know, after the presentation, when I saw what Tsuchi presented and what they all about, it really makes me rethink because it's not what they say, it's what they do. They go and help these people build their ministry and build it for free, and then Suchi leave them alone and told them, go ahead, it's your church. That alone really touched me because here goes Suchi doing something for the people from different beliefs. At the end of today's program, we joined Suchi volunteers in Guatemala as they visited the city of Palencia and village of El Pariso to understand the needs of the disadvantaged. The volunteers also visited three schools to see how they can be of assistance to students in need. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.